Hello everybody. I'm so glad to be back. Happy New Year everyone. I have so much to talk about. Let's get started. All right. I just returned a couple of days ago from a two-week uh, trip to Germany where I spent the holidays with my parents and my sister. And unfortunately, I got the dreaded airplane cold that I got from someone. I don't know. So excuse my voice, excuse my sniffling. It will be, I will be sniffling along this video. So you may know that just before leaving, I was able to snag one of these uh, Osmo Pocket um, devices that DJI just launched on December 15th or 16th. And although I brought my regular Fuji camera with me to Germany, I never once took it out of the suitcase. I took pictures and videos with exclusively with this thing. And I just wanted to share a few clips that I took in Europe and possibly a few findings that I have come across while using this device. First of all, I love it. I still love it. I'm glad I bought it. It's not cheap. It's $469 Canadian and I think $359 US. So it's not a cheap camera. But I found that most of the time it took amazing videos and, and even great photographs. The iPhone XR takes pretty good pictures, but this one beats it. It literally beats it. And I have not even dipped into all the pro settings that are on this camera. You can literally set everything on this camera. You can set your shutter speed, you can set your, your, your ISO. You can do so many things with this that I have not even touched. Because in order to do that, you basically have to attach your phone to it and then you can go into the deeper settings. And I couldn't be bothered. I just went automatic most of the time. Especially when you're in a crowd, when you're on one, in one of those Christmas markets where there's tons of people that, that are walking around and, and having this little tiny thing in your hand, like really conspicuous, then uh, that's way better than, than, than running around like this. It's like, this is like you're holding your regular camera in your hand or your phone. And this one is like, tell, you tell me, filming like this. Or filming like this what is better in a crowd in fact I did not know this but only after I left I found out that in Germany it's actually frowned upon or maybe even illegal to film video of other people in a crowd for example car cameras like the dashboard cams in Germany are not allowed they can only be on photograph every once in a while you take a picture but it's a continuous movie it's not allowed like in North America, everybody has these dash cams and they film continuously and you can't even, it's not even visible in court in Germany because it's illegal to do that. People don't want their pictures taken. People don't want to be filmed. And I only ran into one issue once when a gentleman asked me, is this a video camera? And I said, yes. Is my picture on there? I said, no. What am I supposed to say? So he walked off. But other than that, most people most people didn't didn't bother. Let's say low light. Yes, the footage is grainy when it goes to the to the to a higher ISOs, but it's still the color rendition is absolutely massively good. There are instances where other cameras would have probably been better, just because it's a it's a fairly narrow field of view. You you don't have this wide angle that you have maybe with a GoPro. But for most of the time, the narrow angle, I prefer. And, and in this case, if I couldn't take a wide angle picture, I didn't take a wide angle picture. You can take um, the panorama shots, which is kind of the same as a wide angle picture, but it takes a little part of time setting it up. So for a quick shot, it's kind of more difficult. But um, what was my one issue that I always, always ran into every single time I was using it. The screen is tiny and I'm blind as a bat. That is my own problem. 
I should probably have a better pair of glasses that allows me to view far and close, but I don't. So this is what it is. I, I'm struggling a lot to view things on the little tiny screen. I was, I was glimpsing at it and I was hoping I got it. And sometimes I, I took clips when the gimbal had moved and it was now pointing upwards and I kept on filming and I didn't notice it. And I was wishing for that attachment that you can put on the camera that gives you like a little scroll wheel. But while looking more into it, that scroll wheel is, is going to be not handy for me if I want to quickly attach the phone to the camera because then if you have the scroll wheel attachment then you have to take that off and then put the, cam the phone on. So what I found is if I double click this button here, the function button, this one here, it centers the gimbal again and I should, I after a while doing it, I, I kind of taught myself how to do that to make sure that the gimbal is always centered for where my eyes were. So I want the gimbal to be at my, I want, it, I want to film what my eyes are seeing and if I want to go up, I want to go up and down and down. Just keep in mind, every once in a while, double click that function button and then it centers, it, it resets the gimbal again and you can start filming again. <clears throat> Manually uh, moving the gimbal on the screen is cumbersome. It works sometimes and sometimes it doesn't, but the best thing is just to double click this little button here and, and you're, you're good to go. I never changed any kind of modes. It was always the follow mode, where I go, the camera goes. I haven't, again, I've only had it for two weeks and most of the time I was busy with other things. So I didn't really go into depth, go into detail, but I will I will read the instructions one more time, not that there's a lot of them, and I will watch a lot of videos on how to properly use this. What I do know is that this camera, for what it costs, will produce the perfect B-roll and footage um, for my for my channel. It will it will be able to do that absolutely. It may not be Peter McKinnon standard good with the blurry background and the smooth bouquet and all this kind of stuff but it will not give you like a nausea because it's shaking all the time and it will have great sharpness and clarity and color rendition so from that point of view I have no doubt in my mind that this is a good purchase and I'm glad I bought it. Perfect travel camera. Not super extreme perfect there's points that I have to deduct because it's not dust or waterproof, so you've got to be careful with it. I had it in the rain a couple of times, and um, there was some droplets on the lens, and it kind of gave like a, a shine around it, but it wasn't too noticeable. So keep it keep it dry if you can. It's not waterproof. You don't You drop that in the pool, and, and you're done. So it's not a GoPro. It's not an action cam. It is a, a travel cam. If you can be careful with your stuff like don't drop it either just I would always keep it charged um, that also never ran into a problem that it didn't run out of charge but then again I didn't do like day-long outings the only day-long outing I did was going to Frankfurt um, and so what I had is I had a little battery that I have with me at all times anyways and I have a little bag here and in this bag I put all kinds of little cables. Um, I have a USB, uh, mini USB or micro USB. Then I had a um, USB extender, and then I had a little cable uh, with the USB C. So because that's what you need to charge this one, it's a USB C cable. Okay, so then it's charging. You see the charging? It's blinking like this. Blink, blink, blink. Okay. Um, so. That reason is that it's not just for this camera, but I can recharge everything in my in my bag, my phone, my headphones, everything with these short little cables. And the best thing is just get short little cables because if you you don't need a long cable. And what else I had is um, I had these little attachments that come with the that come with the camera. Um, I had these in this little case and I put that all in my little dicky bag 
for 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 future use. So again, I never needed it once, which is good. So that means the two hours uh, runtime are definitely not an overstatement. I just recently learned about this 180 rule. It means um, if you have a 60 frames per second video, you should have a shutter speed of 120, so double. If you film with 24 frames per second, you should get with 50, or 48 if you can, 50. And 30, it should be 60. This is the best way of making sure that all movements are natural. See, what I'm doing here, I filmed this with 24 point something and I have a shutter speed of 50. So my hand is not making jerky movements, my hand is blurry. But if you film 60K, um, 60 frames per second films and you don't adjust your shutter speed, you may get this really jerky movement and I experienced that when I was filming with 30. I didn't make sure that my shutter speed was um, was 60. Uh, so the 30 uh, frames per second video and and the camera was, uh, was, I was panning around and it just was jerky and I'm like, I need to film with 60 because I don't want jerky movements. But you get the jerkies with the 62 if you don't adjust your shutter speed. So I learned that just recently, so this is something that you would have to go into your phone and adjust if you're so inclined. Again, if you're just filming this because of the fun of it and you're out with your family and you don't want to give a rat's ass about it, then just don't do that. Just put it in auto and it will still produce great footage. The other thing that I have to learn is that you can't do this. like. Literally, don't. You have to be really smooth with your movements when you're walking. As even the best gimbal, it will do the up and down. And you will, so you have to kind of walk stealthily if you want to have really smooth footage. You got to keep it in mind. And, and if you're panning, you can't pan like this. I did that a few times, it's terrible. But there was something I needed to, so I just, so what I do is I just cut the transition out. But if you keep keep that in mind, if you're panning over, you should be panning slowly. Just be slow with your movements. Be be gentle with your walking. Don't be rushing anything. You can, <clears throat> but that's a different type of, if you want like an action film and you're running and just, if you want a smooth movement and a smooth footage and you want it to be like, good quality, just keep in mind, this is not going to cancel all movements out for you. It just makes them better. It just makes them more, 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 more pleasing to the eye, but it will not cancel them all out. It's not going to be a super machine. It's, it's doing amazing, but you need to help it. Okay. So I heard some of you, some people that said, um, the 4k footage is really difficult to work on. Again, I haven't tried 4K yet because it's wasted on me. So I, I take the word for it. So keep that in mind. If you're a 4K person, you have to have a really good computer to work on that footage. Pictures are great. I love the panorama feature, the three picture panorama feature, or even the nine picture panorama feature. I tried one and it was amazing. The problem is that people don't stay still when I take a picture. So I have ghosting of certain people that had walked from one frame in the other so I have a headless guy. It's still a great picture and in Photoshop afterwards I can take care of these things. This is what I meant earlier, you don't have a wide angle camera but you have for pictures, at least for, for photographs, you have the opportunity to to take a really wide shot of the of the of the thing that you want to show by using the panorama function. The motion time lapse works really, really well, and it's super easy to do. Even I can do it. I just don't have I don't have any kind of opportunity yet. And the other thing is that with motion time lapse, you want to put this down somewhere stable. And and as you remember, I mentioned this. It's very it's very head heavy. It's not made to be just put down in a busy area. You can put it down. 
it's not gonna fall over if you put it down but if there's any kind of movement it may fall over and fall down and break so again I'm hoping very soon they're releasing the wi the wireless um, adapter that also acts like a foot for the device and then you can put the charge cable from behind down here so you can use it like a cradle kind of like almost like a phone cradle same thing only it gives you wireless capabilities so let's say I want to film another f video of me making something in the kitchen now I can put it on the, on the island and then uh, tell it to follow me. I can set it on the phone, follow my, my face, and then while I walk around the kitchen, the camera follows me around. I don't even need a cameraman anymore for this, so exciting times. Yay, you'll see me cooking. Yoo-hoo. So this is just a quick update on how I fared with this little Osmo Pocket. I'm really, really glad I bought it. I'm really glad I spent the money. Um, I'm gonna do a lot with this camera, I know. I haven't used it as a vlogging camera yet because I just couldn't, I don't know, I don't have nothing to say. I just, I have to see, I have to develop this. Now that I have this opportunity, I gotta see what important things I have to tell you that I have to film myself during the day and then clip it together. I'm a, I'm a novice to this. I have barely 700 and something subscribers. So I have to do other things to keep the content fresh and kind of like it stresses me out. Um, by the way, there's a video that to this day gets only, only negative comments. Um, I reviewed the 2018 iPad, the budget iPad that works with the Apple Pencil and I didn't like it at all and I said that I didn't like it and uh, I'm getting a lot of hate for that and I don't understand, it's my opinion your opinion may be different I guess that's normal when you're making videos and you have more than 20 subscribers I guess I gotta get used to it I'm not taking the video down because I'm still sticking to it. It was it was crap for the amount of money that it cost. It was crap. I'm glad I spent more money and bought the iPad Pro um, because I'm super happy with it. Again, this is another video coming. This is just a side note, so so you know. Um, I'm gonna add a little clip, just a few things about Germany, just a few clips. No rhyme or reason, just to show you the capabilities of this camera and a couple, a couple of impressions. Okay, you may be noticing um, this excessive flickering of the lights and at first I thought it was normal because I thought maybe it's LED with fluorescent lights it's flickering no it's not when you're traveling with this Osmo pocket there's an option for you to set the uh, flicker or the anti flicker rate in North America the flicker rate that you should set on the Osmo is 60 in Europe it's 50 so I had it on 60 and the flickering that you see on these clips is because I had the wrong setting <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
you're choosing the air to go Yes. And uh, here it has one of them. Yes, it's very small. <laughs> I will find out. What also totally surprised me was the Osmo Pocket's ability to handle difficult lighting situations like this one. These trees, mm -hmm. they're so gnarly looking. Do you see this really lovely, quiet German village of about 5,000 people? This is what happens when all these 5,000 people light fireworks starting at midnight and New Year's Eve. Watch. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed filming it and um, I'm glad I'm back. Again, Happy New Year. We'll see a lot of each other this year. I hope you're looking forward to it as much as I do. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.